Hi, I'm Tom Casper, the editor of American Woodworker Magazine, and I'd like to talk about bandsaws and fences. The first bandsaw I owned didn't have a fence. In fact, I've never even seen one. This was way back in the day. But today they're common equipment on bandsaws. But if you don't have a fence, this is something I'm about to show you will easily help you set up a fence on your bandsaw. It'll fit anything. It's really simple. It's just a big piece of plywood with a bar screwed on the bottom of it that will fit into the miter slot right here. And of course there's a slot for the blade. So it just drops right in here like this. And the major innovation in this thing is this slot right here. And that is the same size as the slot that goes this way in your bandsaw, only in this case what I'm going to use to make the fence is a table saw miter gauge with a board screwed onto it. And here's instant fence that's easily adjustable to any position on your bandsaw. And better yet, you can loosen the handle on this and angle your fence a little bit one way or the other in order to get a better cut when you're resawing because oftentimes straight on for resawing doesn't work. It ends up in a cut that wanders. So you have to adjust this ever so slightly until you get a straight cut. Uh, and most modern fences, the ones that come as accessories to bandsaws, don't have this ability to be adjusted one way or the other. But of course this fence does. It's simple. And uh, that's about it. To lock the fence into place, you just put a clamp on it. I clamp the table down too. But once you find out where it should go, something as simple as this on here, and you're good to go. Now, I'm going to show you some interesting uses for this fence, primarily in making a very large joint. Uh, that I had to make for a coat rack that we just published in the magazine recently. Let me show you what the joint looks like. Here is half of the coat rack. It's an immensely tall piece and what I have to do is to cut a notch in the end of this piece. A very long but very accurate notch so that the foot of the coat rack will slide in here, like that. So obviously accuracy is important. Also the end of the notch has to be dead square because it's a joint. And how are you going to make something like this otherwise? It's really tough. So let me show you how this is going to work. Before we cut the actual joint, this is the uh, joint already completed. I just want to show you how this is going to work before we turn this on. It's a long notch with a very square end to it. We're going to start by making the sides of the notch with long bandsaw cuts like this. But they end up perfectly straight because of the fence. And then I'm going to turn the piece over and cut the other side. And then we'll cut out the center and lastly we'll square the end of the notch. But all this starts with clamping the fence in just the right position. It's just clamped to that plywood table, nothing fancier than that. The other thing I've set up is a stop lock over here for limiting the length of the cut. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, now that we've got the two outside cuts done, uh, well first you can see how nice and straight they are. Having a fence makes all the difference here. Trying to saw that freehand would just be a nightmare and since it's a joint, in other words some other part has to fit inside this, what we're going to create, this notch, a straight cut is absolutely essential. But the next step is to remove the waste in between those two cuts 
And the way I'm going to do that ha is involves two steps. First of all, I'm going to make a whole series of straight cuts in between here to make little fingers. But each of those cuts should end up somewhat short of these two long cuts. Then I'm going to cut the fingers out and lastly I cut straight across here, which is kind of interesting. You'll be need to see how that works. But in order to make these shorter cuts, all I'm going to do is to add two cards, two playing cards that is, cut up, taped together, and I'm going to stick those right on the end of this stop block. And that will mean that the next cuts will end up about a 32nd of an inch shorter than the outside cuts I've made already. Now, with all the long cuts done, to continue to remove the waste, what I'm going to do is to unclamp the fence altogether and move it out of the way. This is one of the neat things that you can do with the band saw fence system, is to go back and forth, quickly readjust the position of the fence wherever you want it. Now that we have the bulk of the waste removed, we still have to get rid of all these little fingers. And then lastly, we'll come across and square the end. I'm going to saw these by cutting directly into each one and making a whole bunch of short cuts. But of course, I don't want to cut too far. So first, I'm going to draw a line, a baseline, so to speak, right across the end here so I know how far to cut. Now that almost all the waste is removed, we just have one more step to do. And this is kind of a clever thing, if I may say so myself. But what we, our goal is, of course, is to end up with a perfectly straight bottom to this huge notch that, uh, I don't know if you've thought about this, there's just no way, for instance, you could cut this on the table saw or anything like this. But you can do this whole operation on the bandsaw. And this unique fence system will allow you to uh, achieve the next step. As you probably know from experience, if you move a piece slightly back and forth like this, you can actually nibble off a straight line sideways. You don't want to put too much pressure on the blade one side or the other, but it'll take a little bit of pressure as long as the blade is sharp. So what we're going to do is to use the uh, ability of the miter gauge to slide in and out of this slot absolutely square to the blade to make a straight cut sideways with the bandsaw blade. I'm also going to remove the thin shim that we put off here because we're going to want this cut eventually to stop against the block and thus be exactly even with the line that we've drawn here. Now the whole trick to doing this is that you can only take an extremely small amount off at one time. If you try and be too aggressive, you're, it just won't work. So we're going to take this in a couple of passes back and forth, just nibbling off a little bit at a time. Here we go. Great, we're all done. You can see how straight a line that sideways motion made 
And of course it's nice and uh, accurate, that is in 90 degrees here, because the miter slot in this table is also at 90 degrees to the direction of feed into the blade. This bandsaw fence system is really, I mean we really pushed it to its limits to do uh, these two cuts. And it was kind of clever that we could make both a side to side cut and an in and out cut at the same time. But I use this fence system for all kinds of things, not just a complicated joint like this. For instance, let me just remove this out of the way and put in instead a typical rail. Actually, this is the rail from this coat rack. It has a giant tenon on it. And we have two shoulders that we'd like to make on this tenon. We've cut the face of the tenon this way on the table saw using a dado set, but now I got to make some rip cuts in order to create these two narrow shoulders. I can saw those by hand, sure that's fine. Stand it up on the table saw, I suppose if you really want to, but it's far easier just to take a bandsaw and with a fence, set the fence to the right distance, clamp it down, put this right against here and just saw away. It's very simple. And again, using a stop block to limit the length of your cuts. It's a great way to get very accurate, repetitive cuts done. And once you have a fence on your bandsaw, you'll find a million uses for it. I really like this. But anyway, this is a really inexpensive <laughs> way, something you can do yourself. It'll fit on any size bandsaw. Just make the table to fit your home. And I'm sure you already have a miter saw, I mean, a miter gauge for your table saw to fit on, on here. So you're all set. See you later.